We've had a lot of movies and shows over the years that are based on video games. Most don't live up to expectations, others become guilty pleasures, and still there are a few that are loved and revered by fans. Dota Dragon's Blood is a new Netflix animated series based off the popular online video game Dota 2. Does this story deliver? After encounters with a dragon and a princess on her own mission, a dragon knight becomes embroiled in events larger than he could have ever imagined. So I've never played the online game, but even if I had, this review is only going to be based on what the show actually delivers. So the story is kind of convoluted. Let me see if I can break it down quickly without giving you any spoilers. There's an evil presence, Terrorblade, who wants to remake the world in his image. He's kind of dormant, but not gone. We have one of our main characters, Davion, who is a dragon knight. He hunts and kills dragons. As he's on his never-ending quest to kill all of the dragons, he has a battle that ends oddly for him. He also encounters a princess and her guard, and then they all go on a quest. The princess is on her own journey to recover some items that were stolen from her kingdom, which are important to her kingdom's goddess, presumably a protector and a benevolent entity. There's an elf that got into some mischief and teams up with a powerful wizard-like dude. And all of these stories converge with some chaos. So I enjoyed the animation style in this. There are times where it looks like sketches and other times like they're utilizing watercolors. And the rest of it reminds me a little bit of Attack on Titan. There were a couple of times though where the entire frame is just this still image and it felt like it should have had some movement within it. I really like the voice actors, and while I didn't recognize them from their voices, when I looked up the movie on IMDb, several were very familiar to me. I also like the mixture of accents that are present from the actors. Now, this is a pretty violent show. I don't think it's aimed at younger audiences. In addition to a ton of bloody violence, there is a surprising amount of profanity. Now, it didn't bother me necessarily, but it did catch me off guard as I wasn't expecting so many F-bombs. There is a lot of great action. We see warriors who are outnumbered take on foes, dragons swooping down to devour prey, and then there's this all-out battle between two armies. There's also a lot of hand-to-hand -hand fighting that goes on, and I found it exciting to watch. So while I really enjoyed the animation, you know, the voice actors and the action, the story, like I said, was a little convoluted. I get the individual quests that each of the parties are on, but some of the motivations weren't as fleshed out as they could have been. This is also compounded with two entities that are very similar in name. There's Selimene and Mene, and it's kind of like Sauron and Saruman. I understand who Selimene is in this show. She's the goddess who is worshipped by the princess and her kingdom. But Mene is another goddess, I think. I mean, it's who's worshipped by the elves. But aside from the name, I don't remember any context that is given for Mene. The final conflict felt a bit out of place for me too. There's a massive rift between two character groups, but there's not a ton of context given for why or how it came about, especially since it feels like there has been an existing tension for quite some time. We get a line of dialogue that says how one group is being pushed out and becoming invisible because the other doesn't want to acknowledge them, but the tension feels like there's a lot more to the story. In this, I found myself being conflicted at who I was rooting for also. I don't count that as a negative necessarily. I think it's one of the really good things about this show. They were able to create two sympathetic characters who are at complete opposition to each other. And because of circumstances, I'm drawn to both and want both to succeed, but for different reasons. And when more is revealed, who's the villain? Or are either of them a villain? Or maybe they both are. I like that it made me pause and question whose side I was on. This first season is book one in the series. I'm not sure how many books there will be or how soon the second book is going to come out, but book one, it's eight episodes with each of them being about 25 minutes long. The middle episodes feel a bit like filler, at least for this story as it stands right now. The beginning and the last two to three episodes were really the strongest for me. They upped the tension and I even felt this sense of impending doom, which only worked to engage me further in the story. I think some of the explanations of the characters really do need to be examined more. There's some rich storytelling that could be done, especially with Davion and the dragons, and then especially with one dragon in particular, Slyrak. There's a relationship between them that I just want more info on, especially because of how they interact with each other and what it means for them both. And I'm hoping that more is going to be explored in book two. Overall, this is a mixed bag for me. I like the animation and the voices and even enjoyed some of the story, but a lot of that story still feels like it needs to be explained. Maybe it makes total sense if you've played the game, but as a standalone series to watch without any background, more is needed to make it great. 
That being said, though, I am looking forward to what they bring in book two. There's no sex, brief nudity, a lot of profanity, and a ton of violence. I give Dota Dragon's Blood three out of five couches. So if you played the online game, I'm curious if that story lines up with the animated series. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.